you know, right away. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. We'll start with our pledge and Commissioner Patton, if you'll our invocation, please. Wait, where's the flag? Where's the flag? There's someone different here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our gracious Father in heaven, we come before thee this evening in the most humble manner we know how. Thank you for the time we have come together in this capacity to discuss the affairs and, uh, of the city of Beaver Dam. We ask your blessings upon this meeting that we'll do so in the most acceptable and well-pleasing manner. <coughs> we ask your blessings upon us as a community. And we pray, Father, that a joyous time of this season may we continue, not just for this season, but throughout the whole year. And we all be in fellowship one with the other and show brotherly love throughout our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> Welcome everybody out tonight. Uh, first item of business is the uh, approval of minutes. I make a motion we approve minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify that. Aye. Uh, Opposed, same. Next item is the bills. I think everybody had their in their packet. Move to pay all bills. Second. We had a motion to second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify by the aye. Aye. Post same. Motion passes. Old business. Number one item is the Aqualine contract. And I told Kevin Watkins two or three times, and they're good to reach him. I went by the shop once, and he went there. And he called me today on the lot in front of Walmart, and I failed to mention if he was in, if he'd be interested in doing virtually the same thing. So. Uh, A.B. I've never seen a copy of the letter. They didn't pull it up. We sent something to A.B. at the April meeting. I think that's going to remind her, yeah. So if we can table that until he gets in or... Okay, well, the item number two we're going to table as well. Just because it's... Yeah. You don't have the information on that yet, right? Number three is the Farmer's Market Market Coordinator Grant. And I have to take responsibility for this one. Last year when we did this, there was $2,000 budgeted for Farmer's Market in the budget. Well, this year when we started doing the grant, I didn't realize, I didn't catch it, that there wasn't a lot of money away from it. No, $2,000 wasn't in there. The grant has been done, and what it was, it's Market Coordinator Grant. We've already approved 1000 of it, and it was a $1,000 match. It comes to uh, Debbie Silver was appointed as the market coordinator, but what she's done with that, she's used it for all the events and stuff they've had at the market. So she's not getting paid to do any of this. Well, there was a second, another thousand dollars. So we need to approve a thousand dollars on our side to get the match of the other thousand dollar grant that we're going to give us. Approve the farmer market grant. Second. We have a motion to second for the discussion. Those in favor signify that. Aye. Aye. Post same. Motion passes. Good evening, how are you today? We were, wait, we were waiting for you. That's what I'm saying. Oh, God. Do we want to go on down the southern? Or back up to... Do you have anything on the aqua line? I have not seen anything to Kevin Likens. I stopped by there to see him. Has anybody talked to him directly? I failed to. I had him on the phone today and it just. I had him on my you were going to do it. Right. But from what you read over the contract, there's no, you don't see any problem. I mean, it's nothing that we're tied into them, is it? No, no. It, it, it clearly provides that you can uh, uh, rescind the agreement on 30 days' notice. Either side can. <laughs> well, there's, did they ever pay that one that they were supposed to pay? They did pay it? Um, I got payment just yesterday. I never posted it. <coughs> but they still want to change the contract, right? Yes, you questioned me on the new contract that I had at the time. Yeah, if I might, uh, paragraph three of the billing and collection agreement, now, this is the last one. This agreement is terminable by either party or by written notice to the other party no less than 30 days before the, before the date of termination. 
dire determination shall not affect the claims made to Aquiline by the city of Birmingham and customers prior to termination. So if you want to end it. And they're current with everything now with that one this week, right? Yeah. We probably need to have something else in place. Yeah. We, <coughs> we need to have something else in place before we end it. They're, they're wanting to fix, they're wanting to pay the water, but they're not wanting to pay the sewer, right? Right. Doesn't that go hand in hand? No offense, but doesn't that go hand in hand? Well, that was one of the incentives to the city for yeah. doing it to start with. Because if you're running water, it's got to go somewhere. Yeah. Their argument is if it's running the leak, it's going out on the ground and not in the system. That's what the... But that's not necessarily true, depending on what the problem is. But when people have water <laughs> leaking out, they still have to pay the sewer on it anyway. That's figured into the water, isn't it? We, we can, well, we've adjusted. If it's a leak on the ground, we, we can... Uh, just the sewer. They still have to pay for the water. The water is always paid for. Percentage wise, what would it be? Like, say you run a thousand gallons of water out, and your bill would be X amount for water and X amount for sewer. What, what's the percentage there? Do you know? Uh, sewer, sewer would be higher. The sewer would be higher than the water. Right. That's what I was afraid of. That's why they wanted to. Pop down of it. It's more expensive to treat the water going out than it is coming in. Supposedly. Yeah. No, it is to us. It is to us. <laughs> supposedly. That's what they suppose. Okay, so you're going to try to work with Kevin and get. Because that. What the. T so we're just going to eliminate, try to eliminate off the line here? We would just do it ourselves. Or there's other companies out there if we want to try to contact somebody else because we talked to somebody at KLC in October that, or September that does the same thing. But does Kevin do all of it for him? Yes. So he would know what's been spent in the last two years. Okay. Uh, next item is then under new business is the commission meeting room rental. I don't know. I guess this is this a contract that's under some basic or something on the house or? Well, this is based on all the house. We, uh, we rented it uh, Saturday to a family for a uh, anniversary and we called the uh, senior citizens of the building and the city of Centertown for the that rental. And we, we've done the same that Centertown had. Who do you call? Center, city of Centertown and the yeah. Wakati yeah. Senior Citizens Center. Building. Uh, so we, we kind of went with what Centertown had, it was cheaper. But for the amount of work that we had to do, it's not worth what we've done. Uh, you know, I, I had I was out six man hours getting everything ready and taking the cleaning up the day. And for a hundred dollar rental fee, I, I just I don't feel it's worth it. Uh, well, they're supposed to clean it up, though. That's on the contract. No, he's. You're talking about resetting the chairs and everything back right. there. Oh, so we have to move all the desks in another room, move the chairs out, bring tables in for the uh, amphitheater, bring the white chairs and tables from there, uh, trash cans in, and you know, and then we had a meeting tonight, so we had to make sure it was clean. So it just. And this floor is not as durable, I don't think, as what we was kind of told. Uh, I'd love to show off what we have, but I just, I'm afraid it's going to be a bigger, bigger one deal than what we need to get into. But that's, that's, that's y'all's pleasure. Well, I think a lot of it's going to change, too, because the plan is, and of course, we're going to, Larry and I already talked about it a little bit more after the first of the year, like all these chairs are going to get rid of them and get the smaller chairs, whether it be folding or the stackable kind, and the tables and stuff where we can all keep it here and not have to go back and forth to the amphitheater anytime they get ready to do anything like that. That should cut down on a whole lot of it, especially if, if these chairs aren't here. Well, something we the best too. Well, that'd be the only thing you'd really have to move. Well, you didn't move these things completely out of here, did you? Yes. Move in there. 
put them in the back? I just put them in the wall. That, and they just tell you. I, all, I don't think. See, the plan was for this to be on the other end. And they were going to use it if they used the kitchen area. This would be kind of where they would set up food and stuff yeah. if anybody was. Yeah. Put a lock, you know. I think there's a lock here, but you can put a lock on every drawer. I'm not going to get much out of mine. No, that's what I'm saying. They better let my ink pen alone. Doesn't mind, but they did. But uh, if, you try, if you raise it over 100, you're not going to get any takers. What's the senior? Uh, 350 plus. I think it's 350 plus you have to have their custodian there during the yeah. time and you have to pay them their hourly wages as well. 350? I think that's what it was. What are you talking about the senior center? Uh, it's been raised since we've been over. Yeah, I, I, think it's what, I think it's what it was. It's bigger than this though. Well, at least it called. Mm -hmm. She was telling yeah. me. How much? I went to 150 on the wall. I really think my personal opinion right now, just to table this right now until we check on the other furniture stuff and see if we're going to go ahead and, and get it. Because if we're going to get the, like say, the sackboard with folding chairs to use the all time out mm -hmm. here, it's going to take, down, that's to going to cut down a whole lot on the amount of work that's to be done. Yeah, we've got a table here that's the more stationary that we can lock for. That could be the banquet table, be one thing. But I did have a question about the rental time. You used to have between the hours of blank and blank. Weekend rentals, it's not a place on here, but if you have one up for Saturday afternoon or at Sunday, you know, things, it's not, you're just talking about hours of a.m. to p.m. Well, they want a weekend. Uh, you, you can still rent on weekends. Yeah, no, yeah. Play that morning time. Then this was on Saturday. When yeah, you just have to strike out, say, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yeah. Because someone's asked me what time. I said, well, look here, they don't on do it only in the evening, but Saturday is to be any time. Yeah. So they want to make sure they could do that. Okay. And the cancellation notice. Now, one thing I found when I talked to a couple people, 14 days, two whole weeks is, could be pretty long. Once, you know, people have a lot of serious things come up and they're not beyond their control. That could be within less than 14 days. But, uh, that's a little bit much, I think, uh, two weeks cancellation notice. You know, if something serious could come up. I understand 48 to 72 hours, but not, two, not 14 days. That's a little long. Okay. So I might want to consider that when you wait to write this thing back up. Okay. Is she late? Yeah. I'm Nancy. Uh, Ask her if she can stick around for a few minutes. We're not going to do anything else with this tonight? No, because okay. I think we need to wait, you know, find out what we're going to do as far as furniture wise, what's going to have and what's going to be involved in it. Okay. <coughs> Okay, next item is the uh, reappointment of Garrett Addington to the Code Enforcement Board. I move to appoint Garrett Addington to the Code Enforcement Board. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. <coughs> next item is approved purchase of directional boring tool. Yes, the, uh, we have a two inch mold right now. And it is, Matt went down on us. And, uh, it's actually just a shade too small for what we're doing. So we've got a price of a two and a half inch uh, mow and a three inch mow. Uh, the three, two, three inch mow is $4,800, two and a half is $4,027. But our air compressor is not going to be big enough to handle this. So we will also. Either one of them or? It just won't just handle I just need one of them. No, I meant. The air compressor won't handle either one of them. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So if, if we purchase a, a new piercing tool, we will also have to look for a slightly used air compressor. Which What's that compressor does it require? It's going to take 115 PSI, continuous. Continuous? Continuous. I think you can find a used one? I think so. The one we have now, I think it was bought in 78. And it's, yeah. <laughs> really? It, it's a 99 PSI, and it's not going to be large enough to handle. But the air compressor is going to run somewhere between, I'd say, 12 to $18,000. That's going to be a used one. But this this is how we do our road bores for water service lines. He doesn't come in the next model, does he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He well, doesn't I mean, after the next model, does he? Yeah. Air compressor be used for like when you had to jackhammer concrete mm -hmm. and stuff like that too. I mean, I get it. Well, it used to. No, they've got the. We bought a skid steer. Skid steer. Well, I mean, gosh, why don't y'all just get fancy on me? <laughs> You're behind. I am. <laughs> this, this would come out of the water department as well. So. Any repairing the old one for a? 
temporary fix or? No, it's, it's 12 and 13 years old. What size mold would you really like to get? Any, well, the, the three inch would be great. We can live with the two and a half because what we do now is it's a two inch one that we've been using. When we make a bore, we'll pull a two inch water line back, use it as a piece of casing and run our service line through. Well, the bell on the two inch water line is over the two inch OD, so it's kind of hard to get back through. We can live with the two and a half, the three would be great. What's the price difference again? Uh, $800. It's not that much different than you get the whole scheme of things. Is a three service you better? I'd do a three. Okay. I'll make a motion, but I also I'm prefer to, to look at the air compressor. Yeah. The air compressor. To purchase or just look at it? We have a motion. Yeah. 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 We have a motion. Second. We have a motion to second any part of the discussion. Hopefully it'll last another four years or so like the last one. Yeah, yeah. it's lasted four years. Okay. That'd be pretty good. Those any, any discussion? Okay, those in favor signify both. Aye. 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 Post same. Motion passes. But Keith, do you have anything? Uh yeah, for to for accounting purposes, I'd like to make a motion that the uh, restroom tax money that goes for the payment of the amphitheater be be uh, taken out before the money is dispersed to any other agencies. By law, you can't do that. Can we not do that, A.B.? Question is, what? Can what well, I think it, this is what you're saying, and then you want to take. Take the when the money from the tourism comes in, when the, the restaurant, when the tax, restaurant tax, tax money comes in, we take just the future the tourism money. payment money out and then give it to wherever it goes. The ordinance, um, the original enabling ordinance, which was passed in 2013, specifically provided for that, that the treasurer would withhold the money and or was authorized to withhold the money. To withhold the 10%, mm -hmm. right? No, I think was authorized to make the debt payment, uh, debt payment. Subsequently, uh, the city entered into a contract with uh, the um, Tourism Commission in which the agreement was that the money would be dispersed to the Tourism Commission and um, to the extent of any bonded indebtedness would be paid in a timely fashion. So the original ordinance clearly provided that it could be withheld. For reasons I, it's not clear to me, the, the following year there was a contract entered into between the city and commission, and the only difference was the money would be paid over to the commission, but the commission was then to uh, uh, pay for the bonded indebtedness in a timely fashion. Uh, your wouldn't it be simpler just take it out to start with. That's a decision for the commission to make as to how the how the payment is to be how the payment is to be made. I think if you go back and look at the state statute. It will tell you that all revenues comes in. That the city is the taxing agency, but all revenues comes in has to be turned over. The Tourism Commission, when it was first set up, did vote to go ahead and do the 10% administration fee back to the city. Uh, but that's something the Tourism Commission voted to do. It's nothing that the city can force them to do. I'm not sure. There's no question what the ordinance says. There's no question what the agreement says. The ordinance, the ordinance, the enabling ordinance, uh, where the tax is uh, uh, placed, section four of the ordinance, y'all can, can pick, pull up a copy of your own ordinance, clearly says that the money can be paid directly. The following year, an agreement was entered into in which the, the, the bonded indebtedness uh, was to be paid uh, in timely fashion. Now, the, the, that paragraph doesn't specify what timely fashion means. If your question for any of y'all is, 
you want to ask an old lawyer where you have a contract between two parties that's binding and legal whether or not the terms of the agreement ought to be entered into should be complied with by both parties, the answer is yes. Well, what else would you expect me to say? There is a contract. The contract is a year after the ordinance. The contract requires a payment to be made. And the question is whether that's enforceable on both sides. It does. Now, the term timely is not specifically specified. What I would say to the entire council is this. If you want to alter or change the agreement, it is between the city and its own agency. If you want to alter and change the agreement in some way to restructure the payment or eliminate portion of the payment, y'all can do whatever you choose to do that you deem is in the best interest of the city. But as it stands right now, you have two legal documents in place. You've got an ordinance, and then you follow that with a contract the following year. And either under the contract, the parties need to live up to the two provi the provisions in the contract, or the contract needs to be amended in a fashion that the commission wants to amend it, recognizing the issues that exist uh, perhaps with the Tourism Commission, but that's up to y'all. Again, it's 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 a agreement between the Tourism Commission and the City of Beaverdam. Wouldn't both parties have to agree to it? The answer to that is yes, but but if the original agreement was agreed to by both the city and, and by, by the Tourism Commission. The original agreement, in my opinion, is binding. The provisions in the contract are binding. So both sides should live up to the agreement unless the two parties, for reasons that y'all think is in the best interest of the city and its agency, the Tourism Commission, if y'all want to alter it or change it, by all means, alter or change it. Uh, I wouldn't leave it the way it is. Uh, if what you're going to do is have provisions in the agreement that are not being specifically complied with. I'm still confused. No, no, there's nothing to it, be confused about. Well, there's an ordinance and there's a contract, and I don't know which one has precedence. Does one of them have precedence over the other? In the face of the ordinance, the ordinance specifically provides that the payment can be withheld. In the face of the ordinance, this same city commission decided to enter into a contract in which y'all agreed, in effect, to accept the payment in a different way. The payment, all the monies, as the mayor referenced, would go to the tourism sure. commission. A specific paragraph in that agreement said that the bonded indebtedness would be repaid from the commission back to the city in a timely fashion. Now, it didn't say, the agreement didn't say whether the time it was two weeks, a month, 90 days, six months, didn't say. It just says timely. But at some point, timely becomes not timely, and that's a decision in, in effect for y'all to make. My recommendation is to do one of two things. The city determine how that payment is to be made if you're going to live by the existing agreement, or change and alter the terms of the agreement, recognizing whatever's going on that y'all think would require that agreement to be adjusted or amended. What I wouldn't do is, is leave it in a situation where one side or the other is failing to comply with the agreement on an, in, on an, indef, on an indefinite uh, basis because y'all are responsible for the city, the Tourism Commission is responsible for their activities. Both have treasures. There's no, if there, if there is an agreement in which there's some question about whether a term should remain or not remain, uh, it either needs to be complied with or needs to be adjusted one or the other. So I guess I withdraw my motion then. <laughs> well, I, if we can't amend the ordinance. I mean, if it would do no good to amend the ordinance. You know, I'm talking about the ordinance. He's, that's what I was confused about. Are we talking about the ordinance or are we talking about the contract? I'm confused. 
Well, I said the ordinance, but if, if as Paul says, the state says we can't, it, it has to go the other route, then I guess I'll change my motion that we amend the contract. Um, amend the contract to what? To stating that the payment, the payment, the future payments for the bond issue money would come out first. I'm not worried about the, the there's nothing to amend in the ordinance. Okay. The ordinance the ordinance already provides that the that that the city if it chooses to can uh, have the money be paid directly by the treasurer. You then entered into a contract, uh, and the contract provides uh, that the money first go to the commission, and then from the commission, uh, uh, that payment is then to be made back to the city. So your, your, your motion is to amend the contract to require the payment to be what? Taken out when received. That work because doesn't, doesn't the money and you you may know more about this doesn't the money that we get from the restaurant tax it is supposed to go to the tourism all commission. of it's supposed to go correct and, and that's what i'm thinking the tourism that, did lead the vote to do the 10 percent for the administration but they don't have to do that but they also signed the contract to do the yeah no. so i'm that's what i'm trying to figure out if, if i'm like you that kind of fashion well, timely, timely is going to be the same same thing as reasonably, legally, and you on a, where, where payments are being made monthly by in this case by the city, I assume. It, I don't know how long it's now been, but but if, if what you're saying is is it going to be timely for the payments to be made six months or a year later, the answer is I think going to be legally no. Or the contract with Road 2013, you said. 14. Yeah, 14. So what did what did you do then? I don't understand. Did you, did you? <laughs> I'm not sure I do now. Uh, made a motion that the money be taken out, that the contract be amended, where the payment is subtracted when it received. I think what you're saying, you, you want the contract amended to where the commission will be required to make the repayment of the bonded and debts within a specified period. What period? I think, what I gather what you're saying is you just want to make sure that the payment's taken out and then the rest of the money's given to tourists. Right. Is that not what he's saying? I mean, I, I think that's what I'm saying. Well, what he's what he what he what he's saying, I think, is that in light of the contract, if you're going to go by the contract, the money's paid to the commission, and then within certain specified period of time, the commission repays the city for the bonded indebtedness payment. If your if your suggestion is, I don't know why we have an agreement when it's in the ordinance. I don't. I don't have a disagreement with that. There is clear language within the ordinance. But what the city did afterwards, and I'm not, uh, I'm not sure why, but but eight or nine, ten months later, the city entered into a contract with the commission, uh, which which has a different provision in it that was within the ordinance. In the contract, the money's first paid to the commission. Right. And I'm not arguing with the mayor. He may be right. Technically, it may be supposed to be paid to the commission to begin with. But the agreement is that that within a timely period of time, that payment, that bonded payment, is to be repaid to the city. And if you're going to amend the contract, it would seem to me that you want to specify however much time they got to make the payment, or change the agreement to change change somehow how those payments are. Um, not to be made or to be made in some other fashion. But as the contract now exists, payments are to be made in a timely period 
And to me, if you're going to amend the contract, you would specify what that timely period constitutes, and then you would require the commission to make the payment during that period of time, whatever it is. So basically, all we'd have to do would be a minute for to what timely fashion we have, right? That that would be the simplest thing to do. The the specific paragraph of the agreement that requires that requires the payment, which is I think is paragraph one in the agreement. If, if if what you're wanting to do is to make sure when the payment is made, you would alter that payment to. Um, <coughs> State when the payments to be made. Thirty days. I don't know what a timely fashion is. That's what I don't understand. I, I would think 30 days would be a... But like you said, it could be days. six months. It could be three months. It could be, you know, I don't know. But I don't I don't know what you would say timely fashion was. I think you're trying to get it's too away way from that terminology and put different terminology in it. I think that's what you really want. To yeah, do, that's right? what I said. Well, don't worry about time and fashion. Yeah, we want to get rid of time and fashion and put a time okay, in. Okay, that's what I thought you would put me in. But that there again, what? Well, I really thought we had all this, this settled when we set the new budget with tourism and had the time period to pay it off. But obviously, we didn't. And I will say this: let me make a motion. We will. You'll be canceling concerts this summer. You know, I just. We have been the talk of the state this past year, and you gentlemen are essentially killing that for the city of Beaverdam, so keep that in mind. I understand. And, I, and again, that's why I was concerned about the time. I mean, if, it, if we could sit it, because I know you have to pay for concerts now. You don't have a choice. That's why we talked about before we ever built this thing. And that's why I was thinking. And we all were on the same page until now, and all of a sudden now we're not on the same it's page. It's timely fashion, we move it like so many months out, like three months out, four months out, whatever. But I'm just saying, I know, because I know how it works, because I did this job for a while. And I know you have to have money in the winter for part of it. But there again, I don't understand the time. I don't know how you would re figure out timely fashion. You know, is it is it six months? Is it three months? Is it two months? Uh, is it a month? It, it would just be, I don't know how you could put a number on it, to be honest with you. But yet I know it needs to be something done to get it, to get it, the ball rolling. Yeah, I'm not sure about the number either, but I agree that something something needs to be put in there. It's it's just wide open the way it is. And that's why I ask if it was something that it would be something that the city and tourism would need to sit down and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Because you know, well, I thought we had done that, but well, again, obviously, I don't no. think it was clarified enough. I don't guess. I don't. I I don't remember it ever being. A date set, and I think that's what Keith's trying to get done. Is saying, okay, let's get a date set to where we know at certain certain time this payment's going to come in, or this payment's going to come in. And I don't, like I said, I understand that this is the, the leanest time for the commission right now for tourism right now, because they have to pay for their concerts right now. It's tough, and I can understand why you would have to cancel the concerts well, I mean, because you can't afford to pay them. You'll cancel your summer program and you'll you'll kill the amphitheater. Yeah. But that's fine. That's what this commission wants. And, and again, I'm, that's I'm what saddened I'm saying. by that that you all have, and, don't have the foresight to see. And, it, and again, that's what I'm saying. I don't I don't want that to happen either. But that's why I'm trying to figure out. Why I'm trying to understand what a timely fashion would be. I mean, that's my big problem with it. I guess is I don't understand the the, the phrase timely fashion. Uh. I don't think anybody here is against the amphitheater, and and you know maybe things can be moved around, but this don't need to stay the way it is. Just open ended like that. So, I mean, and I know I'm leaving, but I'd like to like to see something situated with it before I leave.
When will you have the down payments on your concert paid off? No, we've already done one. One of them we can't cancel, but the other one's due this week and another probably the end of the, the month, so we'll cancel those two shows. We'll just have one show next year and well, no, sell it. How, how much would that be? Hmm? How much would that be? Because I know what you bring in on tourism. I mean, you bring in on the tax every month. That's the reason I, I say that it's not. Oh, the two of them are well, lower than one. Because well, I'd hate to cancel the concerts. I mean, there's no way I'd want to cancel the concerts. But uh, again, I, I do see we. And it, I just would like to see it something down the road where we could get it get it going, get it paid off. That's the only thing I'm I'm really worried about. Because I know right now it's kind of like we're, we're just kind of staying at a at a standstill and we need to do something. But again, I don't I don't want to see the concerts canceled. I want to see the concerts going through. But well, like I said, when we first before we ever built this thing, we talked about four to seven years, and that there was going to be some lean times. There was going to be some times it'd be kind of standing still, and then times it was going forward. We're, we've done, we've finished four years now, and, and for some reason you all have forgotten that discussion we had. I, I remember uh, the discussion, but the discussion I remember was two to three years, not four to seven. Yeah. But, I mean, if my motion dies for lack of a second, then it dies for lack of a second. And again, I, you're saying change it to where? Well, there's, there's something fixed in there instead of just wide open. Well, what would the fix be? What, what day are you want? Six months, three months, two months, a month, what? Whatever. Whatever could be worked out. <coughs> would 90 days be enough leadway on something like that? That's three Probably months. Not. Probably not to get them their concerts. Well, no, we're, we're, not, we're just talking about future. You're talking about after the concert season's like no, 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 no wait. You're, you're not. There, there's, there's, and then I kind of think I have a suggestion by listening to you, but you're not really talking about the, the agreement is May entered into in May of 2014, and Larry may know I, the payments would have started when. Whenever the amphitheater was built, you know, when it was completed. When was that? About. Here's First the shows were, uh, when in October, October of 14? It was October. Could have been. So October of four, 14 or 15? 14. 14. Yeah. So we're now, uh, four years. We're, we're, we're now basically four years in, and there's two aspects to this. One is the there is the, the contract calls for a monthly. Um, there is a monthly payment being made by the city, if I understand. Correct. 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 And then there are all these prior months that that does this contract would have been in, in effect. So it's it's not just ninety days. Ninety days on what? Ninety days on one payment. Ninety days on the whole thing. Ninety days on what? Because each month there's an additional payment under this agreement. If you understand what I'm saying, so it becomes additive month after month. And what I'm saying to y'all is, it's not fair. It's not fair to this body. It's not fair to the. Uh, the commission's governing body, it's not fair to the treasurer of both the city and this bunch, to leave this agreement where there's this additive effect one month after month, the agreement, there either needs to be an arrangement in which the payment is made and there's some type of agreement that we will forego, which the city could do, these prior installments and start at whatever time you want to start but it, it, the, the way the agreement is functioning now is it basically is not functioning. So my suggestion would be that perhaps the city appoint a person or two to meet with, with the commission and see if this cannot be ironed out and some agreement reached because it's a little bit like contracting with yourself. I mean, the city and the commission, the, the commission is basically an agency of the city. And so the, the two parties can agree to, to 
handle this in a way that I think, hopefully, is but you, if you leave it the way it is, uh, it really and truly, and I, I say this because I know him pretty well, I, I mean, you all leave yourselves, you leave Larry and the treasures in a very difficult situation because of the terminology within the agreement. So uh, you can either try to pass something today or you can have the bodies, representatives of the bodies get together and come back and address this thing directly to the city because obviously there's not an agreement here tonight or there is, I haven't heard it. Well, it, it, it's... Let me go with you. I don't know that it's not an agreement because I think we all want to see the amphitheater come forward. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody would understand. understand. That is an agreement, I think. But it is about the payment, I think, more than anything. Yeah, but the question comes up, and this is not the first time it's come up. It's come up several times. Should, are these, what, is this contract, the contract's binding on both. It's binding on both. But y'all have the authority to make whatever changes you want to make to it in the best interest of the city, in the best interest of the commission. But, but um, is the contract binding? Yes. Are payments required to be made? Yes, under the contract, as long as you let the contract set as it says. Well, sounds like I might as well just withdraw my motion. Well, should we though, but should we make it where we have a meeting with the three? Well, if I could make a motion that, and I don't know whether that even needs to be a motion that the city and the uh, that the city and the uh, tourism mission have some joint commission meetings and work something out on this where it's just not left like it is. I mean, that would would that have to be an emotion? No, I wouldn't think it would be. But that, that sounds like that's what's the only alternative. <clears throat> well, I, again, I don't want to see the tourism not function. Nobody I, does. I, I Nobody does. But but we we've, we've got to do said. something with with the contract the way it is. So can we set up a meeting with mm -hmm. the tourism board? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? We, we're just at the regular meeting, or what would we do on something like that? You probably just want to set up with the chairman. And okay. That would be fine. Okay. That's all I've got. That's okay. probably a plenty. Uh, no, well, I'm ready. I was ready for Christmas. Kevin? I've been ready for Christmas for three months now. Uh, I do have a personal note. I just want to say uh, Keith is leaving. I hate to see him go. But I also want to welcome Mr. Trump in. And uh, I hope he gets to work with you as good as I do with Keith. That's the way I look at it. So, uh, But I know Keith is, I think he's figured out now he's got 23 years instead of 22 years. We're working on that, yeah. And, uh, okay. Pass it in, Paul. Okay. And uh, I just want to say thank you for your service. Appreciate it. I've and enjoyed who knows, it. You may be back on this. You never know. I've enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm never going to do anything that I don't have the city's, the goodness of the city of Beaver Dam in my efforts because uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here to stay. I'll be, I've done, got a little place up there at Sunnyside to end up at. So I'm not going anywhere. And, you know, I'm all for Beaver Dam. I'm all for the amphitheater, and uh, I'm not going to do anything to hurt Beaver Dam. But you know, but anyhow. Are you anything? Yeah, uh, we hired Jonathan Margo a couple months ago at part time. I would ask the city to uh, hire him full time, effective January one. Uh, that way, our vacation goes calendar year. That way, it gets started off with being prorated. Here's the pay rate. Uh, I don't know what it's making now. I don't know. It'd, it'd be a 50 cent raise every 90 days. I don't, I'm not sure what the pay rate is. You're thinking 10? I think so. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor say the vote aye. Aye. Opposed, same. January 1. January 2nd. January 1 is Monday, isn't it? It's a holiday. Holiday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday. Do what? Oh, it is a Tuesday. Tuesday. You're right. It is a Tuesday. What's that? What's that Monday? Thirty first is on a Monday. Yeah. Oh, do we have to be sworn in? So be, I guess it'll be effective January. Yep. Yeah, sure. Set that tonight. 
probably talk with James to get his. We may just take it later. Do we do it in uh, December 31st? Or yeah, or December 31st. Yeah, I should be out. Yeah, I think we'll all be good. Probably good before midnight 31st. <laughs> yeah, we're set. That higher than me, 12 30, 1 8 time. That'd be a month with Monday. It'll be all right. That's fine with me. Mm -hmm. That's all that I have. Uh, have you heard anything from the wastewater about rolling the, the grant? I think I think it's going to continue as long as they don't get a bad audit report. Uh, and, you know, as long as long as they're getting by, uh, and our representative sticks to their guns, I think the discount will go on forever. There's going to be another member or two <coughs> on there, so I don't new member. <coughs> Hartford Part one. one, yeah, and uh, but I think they'll keep the discount. That's all that I have. Contract on Ashby Building. Did you get that done? Oh, no. The Ashby Building. Is that what you gave me? That's what you Okay. Mike? We're good. Tommy? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right? Uh, what was the length of term that Garrett was appointed? Three or four and four? Years is it two or three? I thought it was three, but it may be two. I think they're three. Okay. Aren't they staggered for one, two? Mm -hmm. Nancy, do you have anything? <clears throat> Did you want to bring up the comprehensive plan? Well, you can. We've got something else to talk about, too, here in just a minute. But if you want to go ahead and talk about the comprehensive plan a little bit on where you're at. Okay. Of course, I've been looking for too. Do you want to talk about the comprehensive plan, What where you're at right now? Well, I think I gave you a copy of what their new uh, proposal was from where I got that last week. And also met with uh, George Chen and Chase Vincent and Tara uh, Ward. Uh, we had a little time. We were free to get together. You've got to take that time. So uh, they have come to a decision probably that we might speak also if uh, Chase's office said that they saw where they needed to go in on it. And that their money zone does come partly from the fiscal court, but they could, that we still probably should ask the fiscal court for the money also. And I just wanted to get with the mayors and city and stuff to see how to, to go about um, getting representation and figure out how to ask them for it, because I'm not sure how I need to phrase that and do that. So I'd just like to recall the meeting and decide, because I think Tara, when she looked at the uh, uh, proposal, which is quite a bit of money. She thought the second uh, proposal that they had might be the best one for us to consider taking. What was that, 20000 The three of them went, ranged from 11000 and some change to 25000 mm -hmm. The first one wouldn't cover that because <coughs> no. we have changed so much since that uh, was done the last time in the maps. This time, if I get with them and start doing that, the maps will be corrected. I mean, they, leave, they would even help us try to get the state to go ahead and get everything on the maps that's supposed to be in the city limits that's not listed. So that would be a big help, too, right there. You're paying for that type of stuff. That's mm -hmm. all going to cost for it. So any, that's, any questions, Nancy? Thank you. So can you uh, maybe talk with the one yourself and you want to get an idea of what you, you want to meet? Because I think we all need to be together. Okay. We'll get together and get you get you a date or time set up when we can do something. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. James, any? Yeah, I'm just kind of listening. I don't have enough time. I do want to say that everybody has been really nice to me, and Keith has been really such a gentleman through all of this, and uh, I do appreciate you the help, and I hope that, that I'll be able to do as good a job as he has. Thank you. And I hope you can get me a replacement as good as he can. Ted? He just needs somebody can handle about 100 drug wall makers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ted? Right. Ah, so, I've been working with Nancy now for a long time on, you know, 
eight and probably need four of these. Yeah, it's all right. About uh, building some duplexes. Now the on the right side of this page here is all my property. And on the left side would be Kevin and Bobby Likens, all their property. I always knew that there was an alleyway in here, and that's what this these highlight lines represent. I didn't know, you know, what was what, but since you know I've been trying to get these duplexes done, and you know, I've had to get Gerald involved in all this, and he's he surveyed it all, found pins, and so I was wanting to get this alley closed, and I've done that before on another property, but we have a problem. Is if you'll see this first dotted line right here on the right side of the paper that is the edge of the property line between me and what would be the alley now you know Kirk Green used to own all the property that I have now when I first started working for Kurt in 93 there was a fence there now I don't know if Bobby Likens put it there I don't know who put it there but anyway there was a fence there and it's still there and the old building that was there was about a foot from that line. So the alley was already taken up on that end of the property. This year, Kevin tore the old building down and put a new building up. The fence is still the same. And the new building is five foot four inches from the property line, my property line, not the alley. So still he's taken up more than half of the alley that's never been closed to start with. So, as you can see right up here at the top, this, this fence goes across this way back up towards this street. What is this street in front of Kevin's building? Broadway. Broadway. What? Broadway. 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 So that's, you know, it's all fenced in in this area. So, I mean, I'm coming to you guys to propose that, you know, we can hopefully close this alley. Um, obviously, it can't be used now in the first place. But my question is, is you know, I've had an alley closed before, and I know how that goes. And I'm supposed to get 10, 10 feet. This is a 20-foot alley. I'm supposed to get 10. The other property no owner is supposed to get 10. But half of it's already taken up. So my proposal, I mean, this would be a question for A.V. He would probably know if we quit claim this alley, since Kevin's already took all this down here, or whoever originally took it, why can't I get the part on the other end? The whole 20 foot. It's 300 foot from 2nd Street to 3rd Street. There's already really about 160 of it already taken up. I don't care about that other 10 feet. If I can get my half, that 150 foot. So instead of foot, taking 10 foot wide for the 300, you're willing to take 20 foot wide for the 140. Exactly. And then he take the 20 foot for the other 100 yeah. well, to half it that way instead of... The building's already there, yeah. more than half of it anyway, so... Would he have a problem with that? Do what? Would, would, would like him to have a problem with that? I have no idea about that. Okay. I didn't know whether y'all had... Whether this was something y'all had... Well, I mean, Gerald had was already approached him and showed him all yeah. this. Gerald went down... Because his other option is moving a building off our property. Right. Yeah, he's already, you know, approached him about it. And also another thing that I was wanting to, to bring up, I talked to Paul about this here a while back. Broadway, a lot of you probably already know, which it doesn't affect me, but Broadway has what, an 80 foot easement? 70. I was told it was 80 and Bart was 70. Gerald, that's 70, isn't it? I think Broadway 70 is what I was always saying. But the one in town. Beaver Dam. Yeah, okay. And Barnard. Barnard is 70 also? I don't know that Barnard. That's what Gerald was told. But anyway, do we need 70 feet? Do well, we need 70 feet? There are utilities already. Do placed, what? There's, there's utilities within that 70 foot. Mm -hmm. What we're needing to get, and that's one thing, hopefully, these ordinance changes we're wanting to do. He's got room to build two duplexes, but according to planning and zoning, he doesn't. And we're trying to fix it where he can do the development we need to do here in town because we need the need the, rental property. The property. Does he need the easement off of. Barnard. Planning and zoning has worked with some other people, and if I can get the minute within the boundaries, you know. Well, I think the boundaries are too 
loose. Yeah. So that's why we're wanting to change all this because that's what we have right now, uh, because there's a change there's a two thousand square foot change, which I worked up to one. I was probably talking about the. the this is um, now. No, Here's the new apartments who was at Randall. Right, right. Yeah. And to him, it looked like I'd done it wrong, and I kept thinking after you left, I thought I could figure this out. There's a 2,000 square foot difference in what you can do in one way, and you can do it the other way. One way left him without enough room, but he had the setbacks. He got the setbacks, I could work with you. So the other way, it left him with 500 extra square feet, and that's what he had, and that's the way it worked it up. I worked his the same way, trying to get you in there. But uh, if you don't have the setbacks, then our board can't really do anything about it either. That's why I told him you need to go through a variance. And he's trying to get that uh, part of the alley so he can have that extra, that extra 20 feet. on that one side because you want a triplex on that side, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, I thought we started out first, he was going to try to do duplexes, and that would have been a little bit easier, but he and Gerald have worked it where if we can get some more over there, maybe we can do a triplex. Now, and then one duplex. Barter so, Street. Our utilities. It'll just be how much room you have. Aren't out as wide as it is on Broadway. The only thing they'll be concerned is the telephone. I know on Broadway, you've got the, the telephone lines that are encased in concrete on one side and the water sewer on the other. Well, Broadway doesn't come in really to play. It's barn. 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 <coughs> if, if it is a 70 foot easement. So, what you're really needing tonight is the alley closed, right? Well, yeah. I mean, AV would know if you can, I guess you'd know it. Be done like that or not done like that? Or my, my assumption is that what we're dealing with is the somebody back when, when this was subdivided, subdivided filed a plat. And I have no way of knowing, and I suspect nobody here knows, whether or not that plat was ever presented to the city and accepted by the city. Because, to your knowledge, has this alley ever been open? Not since I've been here, now. And there's a whole slew of them that yeah. have done exactly the same We've got them all over town. Yep. Somebody went and filed a plat and made reference to an alley that was never accepted by the city, never, uh, no work was ever done on it by the city, right. which means, effectively, it is not a city alley. It's only a city alley if it's deeded to the city, it's presented to the commission and accepted by the city, or the city has maintained it uh, for over 15 years, at which time it become a public alley subject to, uh, to, subject to the city's jurisdiction. Now, what that in effect means is that the only way to find out who actually owns this property is to go way back until the time that this thing was subdivided, which is not not going to make a lot of sense. What you can do, what the city can do, and the only thing the city can do here, if, the, if, if, if you want, or Kevin wants, or whoever wants, a, the city to deed whatever they own to you, which would be a deed of quick claim, basically saying, we're going to deed you what we own. If we own it, you get it. If we don't own it, we're not deeding anything to you. That's what a deed of quick claim is. Uh, and most of these alleys that were platted and show up in the plats in the county clerk's office exist exactly like this. There was deeded to the city, there was accepted by the city, and there was maintained by the city. Now the city can give you a deed of quick claim, and you can exercise or try to exercise control of the property that way, same would apply to Kevin, but they cannot give you a deed of general warranty. Cannot warrant title to it because they, it, at best, at best, they have a prescriptive right to it, which is the nature of adverse possession. But they could give you a deed of quick claim if that's what you want. You, they need a description. They need somebody to, has this been surveyed? Yeah, Gerald's done all this. It's actually got a survey description. Um, as far as I know, because he put it on there. He said he's seen where he has the alley, but he didn't. He cannot find anything worth working for. I think what he where uh, um, you have an owner on this side and you have an owner on this side and there's there's an area in between that just nothing. No one owns it. Correct. Yeah. You'd have to go back to the original problem and try to find areas of them. It doesn't make any sense. The best way to clear it up is to get a data for the city 
But the way they're now required, you've got to have what do we a get survey get description. Now, uh, if somebody will get me an actual description and the city will authorize me to do the deal with quick planes, we can do it. But I ain't got a magnifying glass big enough to see that. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's on here or not. Uh, but if you get somebody to do the description of what you're talking about, and if Kevin's got property he wants and so he's willing to need it, that's fine. If, if, that, if you just bring me the description, we'll bring it back to the next meeting and then consider the time time. But do we have to go ahead and make a motion to have a quick plan? Is it possible to get it before? I mean, is January okay with you, or is that because I know you've got? It's been going on a year, so it don't matter. You can authorize me to uh, to prepare the deed deeds of quick claim subject to receiving uh, the, sur the survey, survey description. Uh, I can prepare it and present them back to you and sign them. For them, actually. Okay. Be good. So moved if you need a motion. Yeah, I think Gerald did talk to us. Yeah, he did. And when he did, it was to see what he thought. I think he thought that he should have half of it. He did. 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 Have a title with the city. Could somebody just take the whole twenty foot and not take into consideration the person beside it because it doesn't belong to anybody? Like in your alleys, you split them because they are the city. Well, now a lot of them are just like this. All the alleys we've done is just like this. We've just done a quick climb. Usually it's ten foot and ten foot, but in this case, where Kevin's already built out over the twenty foot, it's going to be twenty and twenty, just split down the other way instead of down the middle of the alley. So, did we have a motion? Yeah. Do I have a second? I'll second. Yes. Okay, motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify aye. Aye. Post same. That motion passes on the quick claim. If you can check on the Broadway, I mean, the Broad Barnard Street. And Gerald may have some information that he can share with you, see if we can lower that from a, well, most of ours are 40 foot. Well, a lot of them are 30. Well, well, that's why I say if we could see if if forty would get you enough, isn't that right? Well, I mean, yeah, in fact, the alley and definitely that street. I don't think we have some off. Not because I can't think last, but you did. But as far as talking about checking, I know. Something about the street or whatever. We'll be working with your lot line where the girl puts that. Yeah. We'll set back. So I gave you 20 feet on one end. I mean, it would be a grand total if you've done the street too. Would that move this line out to closer or something to more of that street? I didn't. If we reduce the yeah, if we reduce the we'll have to be we'll have to be surveyed to see where the road is on that seventy foot right away. Well, you already surveyed, so I mean the pins would be in the road, wouldn't it? I don't know. Well, Gerald asked me about that, and I said I have no idea. He has set a I don't know. He has set a line that goes that way. Yeah, I don't know. Up in the corner of the old and third and third. When you come in town, when you come in town tomorrow, give me a call. I'll meet you up there. He has, set, he has found the pin right there instead of flag, so that would be the center for the road. Does he have another one down on the end of the second street, too? Well, this, that one, oh, on the second. So you could get exactly where it was at. Uh, did you do another one on the second? I don't know if he done, he done the one in between me and Kevin right here, by, on the second street road. Oh, okay. Now, I don't know if he did it down there on the corner of Barnard there or not. But this just is another one of those issue areas where it shows how important it is to get some of this planning and zoning, some of these ordinances reworked a little bit because we could be losing potentially a lot of development right here just because of 20 feet. And that's, you know, that's silly. I mean, there's a lot of these alleys that are sitting around that we've never used or never even made a name. And they always, it always comes up we have a problem with them. Every time we have somebody 
wants to sell land or build a building or whatever. It's, it's kind of a shame. Well, either somebody builds in them and they're unusable or we end up giving them, deeding them away. Right. So. I, I, I doubt that there's been a single year since y'all been on the commission, you two. But the, that, the, alley, the alley question hadn't come up. Yeah, we yeah. called it a dirty word at one time. Yeah, it, it's come up. I think I've dealt with two or three of them. Yeah, since I can remember. Redo the ordinances and just have them in there that they, if that's the case, they haven't been taken over, they haven't been done that, you look through to just <coughs> the partners on either side. Well, but like in this case right here, we can't do that. Well, I mean, you know, but you could change yeah. ordinance where that, that can happen and not go through all those things. Well, that's why our ordinances need to be reworked because yeah. our ordinances were written for other communities. We just copied them, and they're not suitable to our community. Just like the square footage that he's required to have those, yeah. it's, you know. And all of it, it's all because we have a 70-foot right-of-way on a road probably that only needs probably a 30-foot right-of-way or a 40-foot right-of-way. But they would fit on there even with as it is right now. It just doesn't make the ordinance. Of the, yeah. because we require too much square footage for a unit. Well, we got, I mean, we got the setback. That's what Gerald's working on right now is just a hurt as far as the distance in between and all that. But we're going to have to do something about that. Well, we've got another issue with a building. Someone's wanting to build a, put in a new business and build a nice new building, but down here and they're wanting to put an apartment on there. And Nancy can't let them have an apartment. Yeah. Well, they can't let them put in a new business and build a nice new building down here and they're wanting to put an apartment on there. And Nancy can't let them have an apartment on the ground floor. Which is crazy. ground floor. Uh, oh, I, I see. I had told them I, I thought I could go ahead and sign off. It has a basement under it. Yeah. That's existing. And I think if, you, if they told me that that had been living quarters before, it could continue to be that, and they weren't sure. And I don't know that. So I honestly would just go ahead and write it up that we presume that had been living yeah. quarters before so that people can do these things. No, and, and you can come back yeah. and talk me for it. Like no, no I, I know what you but if, if we had our ordinance to change to begin with, that wouldn't be an issue for you to have to go. That's what I'm trying to get work. Well, yeah, you can fix it right now and not have to look for any of those loopholes. to. have a business and a rental because, that, you know, now you don't. You have to have it above you as a rental, but not, you know, not at the end. And that's where they want to put it. Yeah. I said, well, you're going to have to get it. come before the board with the variance and request it. And, uh, but this would make it a whole lot easier on your office if, if we've got ordinances changed to match. Because things have changed. You know, the big thing now, you go to all these conferences, they're talking about mixed use. They want to put commercial and residential next door to each other. And our y'all just can't do that the way they are right now. The same with parking requirements. Most places are doing away with parking requirements. They figure if a guy's going to build a building... He's willing to build it and doesn't have parking. That's his issue. It's not the city's to tell him that. Well, this is that we're talking about his property. His property that goes right down there with Kevin and the new building that he just put down and then replaced it and he made it larger for coming in front of it. That's a business district. He's allowed to come up there all the way, you know, on that back, and he's already has that part. His in the front is a business, but it's an R3. It never went over to B3. So there you've got all those sitting together where half of the block's one thing, another block's one thing. This person can do this and this business over here can't do it because it's not zoned that way. He doesn't need to rezone it because he wants to use it for rent too or else, you know. Mm -hmm. So that one, so that's where you get into that. We'd rework the uh, comprehensive plan. That would be a goal that you could set for future, yep. you know, to get more of that combined. And that can help too, because I can always write it up to the conference plan to brief with it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying these comprehensive plan stuff is so important to get some of this stuff done. I think you could completely do away with square footage for lot size as long as they can meet the setbacks. Because well, that would be the only part that really affects if the I can other get it property. Like that, then I'll take it to the board for a variance. But uh, if, I can't, if they can't do the setbacks, I can't even take it. Do you have anything else? Do you have anything else? We entertain a motion to adjourn. No, move. Second. Second.